Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Conley with Scratch Golf Tips. Today we're going to be looking at the golf swing of Keith Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell has obviously won on the PGA Tour once before. He's a top 50 golfer in the world at his highest ranking, and he has a lovely golf swing, not only to look at, but to learn from. So today I'm going to break down some aspects of Mitchell's golf swing that we can analyze and implement into our own golf swings to make ourselves better golfers. Now just looking at a general overview of Keith Mitchell's swing, I've always found this swing to kind of be an old school swing. A lot of external rotation, a lot of upper body uh, movement in that transitionary move to create speed. Uh, it reminds me of those older golfers, kind of the Arnold Palmer echelon. And in today's game, uh, especially the transition move, it reminds me a lot of Brooks Kepka. So let's start off by talking about the takeaway. Mitchell's takeaway is very wide. He has great extension and he kind of comes outside the ball, even with irons and even more so with his woods and driver. One thing that I really like about a wide takeaway is it's very difficult to come across the ball when you have a wide takeaway. If you think about how you slice a ball, it's because you come across the ball from out to in through transition. If you're already coming outside in your takeaway, your natural move would be come inside through the ball, creating an in to out motion. So if anyone is struggling with a slice at home watching this video, look at your takeaway from the down the line view. Maybe you're coming too inside and you're compensating for that by coming over the top. Having a takeaway like Keith Mitchell's here can really help eliminate that big fade or occasional slice that you may hit, especially with drivers. So that wide takeaway, having it start outside the ball and having it really load up and get into a great position at the top of that backswing, that is something that a lot of people could really benefit from. Now at the top of the backswing, look how straight that trail arm is. It's a great position to be in, and that club is very far away from the body, so the further that club is away from the body, by keeping that left arm straight, left arm for a right-handed golfer, the longer the swing is and the more power can be created through the swing. Now if you look at Keith Mitchell's swing in real time, it doesn't really look like one of these Rory McIlroy or Justin Thomas swings where they're really la lashing at the ball, but he can still get the ball out there a long way, not only because of that good width and extension, but because he has great rotation in the golf swing. Now talking about that rotation, one of the best things to learn from Keith Mitchell's swing is how effectively he rotates and does not sway. I've spoken about this before, but there's a very big difference between rotation and sway, and a lot of times go golfers will feel in their golf swing like they're rotating very efficiently, when in reality, all they're doing is swaying laterally. And the issue with swaying laterally is you're changing the low point of your golf swing. If you're moving your hips left to right and not rotating them around a singular axis, you're really putting yourself in a bad position to make consistently good contact. So in this caddy view of Keith Mitchell's swing, look at that front hip and look how it moves just barely. It moves a little bit forward in the transitionary move, which is very common for almost all golfers. But in that takeaway, it's all rotation. You see that front leg kneel down, that knee bends just a little bit, and that's to kind of open up that trail hip. That left knee going down will open up that right hip so that it can continue to move back away from the ball and create that rotation. A great swing feel for this is try and feel all the rotation around a singular axis and it obviously makes sense for that singular axis to be your spine. So feel like if you have a thread attached to your head, all of the rotation is going around that thread. Now, if you're struggling with the horizontal sway, I would recommend filming your swing from this view. This is called the caddy view. And a great drill that you can do is put an alignment rod in the ground vertically, just maybe three or four inches in front of that trail hip. If you're swaying horizontally, you're gonna bump into that rod. It's gonna give you that physical feedback. We do not wanna be bumping into that rod in the golf swing. Rotation over horizontal sway every time. And Keith Mitchell's swing is a great place to get some inspiration on what this looks like when done efficiently in the golf swing. Mitchell's move through transition is very seamless. He shallows out the club nicely. The club face stays pretty neutral throughout most of the swing, which in general, keeping a neutral club face throughout the golf swing is much better than having it be shut and having to open it up through transition. It can be done 
but it's a little bit more difficult. So just keeping that club face pretty neutral throughout the golf swing is always the way to go. There's so much to like about this golf swing and so much to learn. I hope you learned a few things, especially about the benefits of that wide takeaway and the relationship between horizontal sway and axis-based rotation in the takeaway and backswing. If you have any questions on Mitchell's golf swing, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.